Okay, so we need to focus a little bit more on the parish than the Eucharist this weekend, which is a bit of a shame because I love Corpus Christi Sunday. That is a truly important day for me. But bear in mind that the parish is the home of the Eucharist, and when we participate in parish life, we are participating in the Eucharist directly or indirectly. So on that note, here's the big thing I've wanted to share with you for a couple of weeks now. Um, I visited some folks in assisted living. Uh, they had a, a COVID lockdown, and they had three people who really needed a pastoral visit during lockdown, because they can't see anybody, not even the other residents. So one lady and I, you know, we talked for a while, and I had never met her before. We had a nice talk. And near the end, she said, and by the way, Father, I'm not Catholic. And I said, oh, it's, it's okay. I, I figured so, but it's not a problem. I am, I am happy to visit with you. And she said, yeah, I just figure that God doesn't really care what religion you are as long as you're a good person. And that, that threw me off a little bit. Uh, that wasn't the time or place for an ecclesiological debate, uh, so I, I didn't fight her on it. It was a smile and nod situation, but it, it threw me off. And maybe I'm judging a book by its cover here, maybe I'm jumping to conclusions, but it threw me off because I can't imagine answering the question that way myself. You know, for one thing, I'm pretty sure the list of things God doesn't care about is remarkably short. But also, just imagine a Catholic saying that. Hey, Justin, why are you Catholic? Oh, because it doesn't matter which church I go to. Really? That seems like a lot of work for something that apparently doesn't make any difference. <laughs> and you see, being Catholic, it, it does require effort precisely because it matters. And that leads to the better answer to that question. Hey, Justin, why are you Catholic? <laughs> because I believe this is where God has called me to be. This is the best place I learn about God and commune with Christ, primarily through the glory of the Eucharist. You see, that's the church you should go to, the one that leads you best to God. So for our Parish Update Weekend, this is a day we want to encourage people to register if you haven't done so already. So basically, if you already receive the quarterly and annual financial statements that we give out and, and the parish newsletter, you're good. If you got that, we got you on file. Uh, we also send out a census card every fall and on the back of the annual stewardship pledge card with your contact info on it. So you always have the chance to update us with new emails, phone numbers, etc. If you don't get any of that stuff, then either your information is out of date or you've never formally registered with us and we don't know who you are. Uh, and in that case, I invite you to fill out a registration form or take it home and fill it out later. They're in every pew, every pew today. We, the office staff, we want to know who you are. We want to send you flock note updates and bulletins. We want to involve you in parish events. And when your family name comes up for a baptism, wedding, or funeral, it's helpful to know as much of the family as possible. It helps, it really does. So please, fill one out now, or take one home and fill it at your leisure. And by the way, you absolutely can belong to more than one parish at, a, at the same time. There is nothing wrong with that. And that leads me to what we need from you in the long term, in the long run. This is what makes a church healthy and gets a church to grow. It helps it become as effective and po as possible in leading people to God, because you know that's the whole idea. Are you ready? I'm talking about parish, community, involvement. Because not only do I delight when you come to Mass, but when you contribute to the parish community somehow. Every single year, we need a few people to step up for committees and council appointments. Uh, we need to replace a few catechists for our students every year, and we need students to sign up in the first place. Um, 
If you're looking for something that doesn't require a ton of extra time, we, there is always room for a Eucharistic minister, lector, usher, server, or a choir member. You're here anyway. So that's a way to contribute on a deeper level. And not to mention we have rummage sales, fish fries, the yearly festival. These things work well when people participate and contribute. If that happens, most things tend to fall into place nicely. So in other words, to be a viable parish, we can't just rely on your monetary support, but your support in the form of time as you volunteer, or your talent as a member of a committee. And the overall catchphrase that describes all of this is dynamic Catholic. A dynamic Catholic does something in response to their faith. And I think the error that people fall into is this idea that the church is a business. It's not. That is a pet peeve of mine. The church is not a business where you call us up when you want something, as if I'm in the office waiting for the phone to ring. That is not true. These days, I take an actual day off about once a month. Um, there is always something demanding my attention. People who want to meet with me for a non-emergency meeting tend to wait a week if they can meet me during the morning or the afternoon. If they need to meet me in the evening, the average person has to wait a month to get on my calendar. Again, with the exception of emergencies. I'm sorry, but I can't really do much more than I already am. And this is where I need you to meet me halfway. I want you to view this place not as a business where you get something in exchange for your time and your money. I want you to view this place as a community. And communities are best when everyone pitches in and everyone gains as a result. When people refuse to pitch in, then we all lose a little bit more of that community advantage as a result. If you ask me, it's the exact same dynamic for a healthy family. Because families are tiny communities. And finally, this is the last part of my pitch, but perhaps the most important. I say this quite sincerely. I want this from all of you for your sake. This is good for you. You have much to gain and very little to lose. Your parish is supposed to be the best place that you can grow with Christ. That's the whole idea. And because that's a relationship, you won't grow very well if you remain passive in that relationship. Working on your crossword and playing Candy Crush on your phone during Mass is not going to help you be a better person. Coming to Mass and doing nothing for the parish, that'll help you to a point because Mass and the Eucharist are vital after all. But you will strengthen your spirit by leaps and bounds when you offer your own two hands to the mission of the church and to contribute as best as you can. Think about being a catechist. Help our kids understand the faith as best as they can. Serve at Mass and give me a hand here in the sanctuary. God knows I need the help. Sing in the choir. And I know that it's one more thing to commit to. I know that I'm asking this at a time where all of us are busier than we want to be. I understand that. We are all busy, but you will be better for it. You have more to gain than you lose, by far. So I look forward to seeing some new registration forms this week. Please, please take these words to heart. Don't just show up. Be a part of this place for your sake and the sake of those who somehow depend upon you.